Hello everyone, so today I am here to do another three classics review. Yeah, you guys just got one like a couple weeks ago and I'm already here with another three classics. Probably gonna slow down a little bit after this, I don't want to burn myself out, but I do have three classics that I've read in the last couple of weeks to talk to you guys about, so let's get on into it. <laughs> so the first book that I have to talk about is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov and this is Actually, last time we went like down in order of my favorite, like we went from my favorite to my least favorite, and this time we're going to go from my least favorite up, and I'm just going chronologically, so this one definitely was my least favorite of these three that I read, and I feel like my whole thing with this is I just don't see the hype because I found this very, very boring. <laughs> um, if you somehow don't know what Lolita is about, we follow, what is it, Humbert? Humbert, who is really really obsessed with this young girl named um, Dolores and he basically goes to very extreme measures to be able to be with her um, and it's very it's basically you follow a pedophile so it's pretty uncomfortable um, taboo like story but honestly I wasn't even that uncomfortable with this whole story because I've read a lot of like taboo kind of books and stuff I find them very interesting especially because I just read the book My Dark Vanessa which is right there that takes a lot from this book and I was fine with that so please don't think that I didn't like this because of the subject matter I was very fascinated with the subject matter and I found that that was probably the best part of this book but overall it just wasn't <sighs> executed in a f like not fun I don't want to say fun in a entertaining way or even like a makes you think kind of way. I found this to just be very, very boring because um, I found that the most interesting part of this book was Humbert's kind of internal monologues and obsessive thoughts because he is very, very obsessive. Like, I don't know if you would say he has like obsessive compulsive disorder, more like he is, ju he just has like an obsession, a obsession problem and kind of like he's just like a psychopath kind of basically and he like those first couple of like just internal monologues and stuff were fantastic also here are my tabs the pink people always ask me what the tabs mean the light pink are about childhood and the red are those kind of like obsessive um monologue thoughts that i enjoyed but yeah, I found the first couple really, really fascinating. As you can see, there's like three right in a row. And I thought that they were so interesting and so like really made you think as a person and everything. And I thought the writing was fantastic. But then not much happens after like here, like part two. Wow, I actually did that perfectly. Basically, yeah, after like part one, just not much happens. Like the first part is so jam-packed with so many things because obviously you have to meet Humbert Humbert, kind of get inside of his head, meet Dolores, and then things have to happen for him to be able to kind of stay with Dolores, which was fantastic. I thought that that was so interesting and so in like fun to read in a way, but then just not much happens. For the rest of the book until the very very end. I don't need a really jam-packed fun entertaining plot driven book. I actually really really love those introspection like internal monologue just looking at yourself or like kind of just watching this character exist like I love those books that's why I love Japanese literature because that's like a big thing my boyfriend and I talk about this a lot because he's much more plot driven and he's very like if something's not happening it's not that interesting I'm kind of on I love slow quiet not much actually happens kind of books but this one was just boring I just I I don't know what else to say it was really really boring until the end where like the literal last like 20 pages just other than that it just like wasn't that entertaining even like the first part where things were happening like it was definitely entertaining to read but it also wasn't like mind-blowing I don't know maybe I just had really high expectations for this because so many people love it so so much and it has inspired so much research and like um other literature i definitely did get something out of this though like i said the pink are all about childhood and if you know me i'm in my masters and i'm actually writing my thesis on peter pan 
and writing actually a couple of other essays about childhood and Peter Pan and like the fluctuation of childhood. Okay, we're just gonna ignore the fact that the sun is absolutely ruining my video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm actually, I got quite a bit out of this in the sense of I found it really interesting to read about a subject that I'm already interested in, which is childhood. So it was interesting to see it from like a pedophile's point of view, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like he saw like growing up as like this horrible, horrible thing, which like is interesting to me because obviously that's the same in Peter Pan as like growing up is a bad thing but he sees it in like such a creepy way I guess and from an adult point of view well in Peter Pan obviously you get mostly children's point of views so it was interested in it, interesting in that sense but again it just was a boring book after a certain point. Um, also I found it, I did find it interesting because again, I feel like I did go in with pretty high expectations and I also feel like I knew quite a bit about the story. Um, and I found Dolores to be such a interesting character because she's not what I was expecting at all. Again, I have a lot of expectations about this book because it has influenced so much of culture and society and literature and like literally there is like the Lolita fashion and everything and like lo like acting Lolita and stuff. Dolores is a bratty little bitch. <laughs> like, like straight up I was like the things that she did and said and like especially like she's very promiscuous and I was just like I was expecting this incredibly overly almost infantile like young adolescent girl because of how like it's usually portrayed as a lolita is like this very young like child girl and dolores was such a little bitch she was such a brat and i found that fascinating um so yeah Again, it like some parts were interesting to me and especially like reading about the real character of Dolores and I'm just questioning how the hell people got to where we are with the Lolita from her. <laughs> but um, some parts were interesting. The character of Dolores was interesting. Other than that, it wasn't that memorable or special to me and I found it pretty boring. So I ended up giving this like a three out of five stars. I wish I could have given it higher but I gotta stay true to what I think. I'm sure everyone is gonna hate me. Like, if you're like a 25 plus year old man and are coming at me because this is your favorite book, I don't care. Y'all come at me a lot because I hate your favorite books. The next one that I have is The Stranger by Albert Camus. I was really, really excited about this one um, because this is, what is it called? Existentialism, right? And I have really, really loved existentialism. I absolutely love Samuel Beckett. So I was really interested in The Stranger and I really enjoyed this. I texted so many people after finishing it and we discussed how this is, like, I know I compare so many things to Murakami, but like, I feel like I just gravitate towards things that are similar to him because he's my favorite author and everything. But this really was like Murakami before Murakami was a person. <laughs> like the way I always describe her Murakami books is the character doesn't really matter or like even necessarily like exist as an actual human. They are more just like creatures that things happen to. If you've read a Murakami book you kind of know what I'm talking about. Like the main narrator character never really does anything. They just kind of exist and have things happen to them. That happens a lot in this book which I loved and except for the fact that when the character finally does something like it's horrible and like shit just hits the fan and I'm just like oh my god is this what would happen if Murakami characters actually did anything. <laughs> but yeah this had some amazing commentary. It had some actually really interesting work commentary at the very beginning like kind of um work as a systematic like industry and everything because like basically at the very beginning this character his mom dies and he has to take some time off of work and um like has to go to the funeral and like bury her and everything it's his mom and his boss is all mad that he has to take off work and then he gets back from this whole thing and he's like I only actually took off Friday like the wake and funeral was on Saturday and I only took off Friday and I got back Sunday so like my boss was really mad at me for only missing one day and it was just like it's kind of a whole commentary on that and I thought it was really really fascinating. I also loved how 
this writing style is just so simple. Like most sentences are just a couple of words and they're not really complex sentences. Like it's never like and or like, you know, comma or like anything. It's just like this happened, this happened, this happened, he said. And I really liked that. I found it kept the story kind of at an arm's length but in a good way. I feel like most people say that as in like a bad thing like oh I couldn't like relate but like this it almost felt like I was watching something happen more so than like actually reading a book and I really liked that about it and yeah so if you somehow don't know what The Stranger is about actually honestly I didn't know what The Stranger was actually about. Let's get real here. We follow a character who I'm pretty sure is unnamed throughout the entire book and um, they live in Algeria and again at the very beginning his mom dies and he has to go and bury her and then he takes a vacation basically right after the funeral with some friends that they go to the beach and just hang out and like have fun on the beach and everything and something happens that makes him kill someone and then the second half of the book is all about his trial and it is so fascinating like his mindset during this whole thing because he's like on death row basically like they are debating whether like the whole court case is basically debating whether he should die or not his thought process was just so interesting and it's just it's such a tiny tiny little book and as you can see I had so many tabs in this tiny book. I feel like I had as many tabs in this teeny tiny book as I did in Lolita. Like there was just so much good stuff. Very much existentialism. My friend Dylan says that this book like made him completely like reconsider like God and like the like a divine power or like the universe or anything. I didn't get that but like <laughs> it's definitely very existential and it was fantastic and I loved it a lot. I feel like I can't say anything else just because it is so tiny and I don't want to spoil anything but I do highly recommend this one. I thought it was fantastic and again it's so short you could read it in like a day and I give this a four out of five stars. I really really enjoyed it. And the last book I have for this three classics review is The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I love this book. I'm just gonna say it right now absolutely loved this book. Give it five stars. Probably gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. Here are my tabs and up top and as everyone always asks what different tabs mean. Red is Michigan and autism. Um, orange is quotes slash discussion. Purple is madness. Yellow is plot points and light pink is Michigan's background or personality. So there you go. Lots of amazing quotes, lots of amazing scenes, and then obviously these um, sticky notes. I have made a whole, a lot of people ask me how I annotate and stuff. I've made two whole videos on it, and um, I use sticky notes to write in like long things that I have, like questions or whatever, or thoughts, um, when the book doesn't have like amazing margins. Like th these margins aren't too bad, but um, I just thought it would be better to put them on sticky notes, especially because I don't know anything. I don't have any, like, a uh, professor to ask these questions to or anything. Like, I'm not reading this for school, so I wouldn't want to, like, write something that was actually wrong in the book and have to, like, go back and edit it. Also, before I get asked, this is the Wordsworth Classics Editions. These are so cheap on Amazon. They're literally, like, four or five dollars. I really enjoyed them. They are very floppy, very floppy paperbacks. I thought it was great but um yeah loved this book so let's talk about it. Basically The Idiot is about a young man named Prince Mishkin and he was at an asylum in Switzerland and he is returning to Russia and he kind of gets mixed up in the Russian hierarchy and the upper class of Russia and basically I looked into this book a little bit and Fyodor Dostoevsky basically said that going into this book he wanted to create a character that was completely good like a just pure innocent good character who would experience the cruel and unjust world of Russia's like upper class and that just warmed my heart because 
while this book is called The Idiot, which is very unfortunate and that word is used a lot, I personally 100% believe that Mishkin has autism. And as I said, red is all of the points where these autistic characteristics come to light. And basically I believe he has autism because although obviously that is not ever said in this book, um, autism was kind of it became a diagnosable mental disability in I believe it was the 1910s or 1920s and this book was written in the 1860s so that word was not a thing so I personally believe that Mishkin is a character who is autistic but wasn't canon canonically said to be because that literally did not exist at the time so Yes, that is how I am reading this book. If you read it a different way, that is also totally fine. But the reason that I love this book so much was because of that autistic rep. If you guys didn't know, I actually do have a degree in my bachelor's degree in bachelor in a um, English education and my focus in education was special education. I worked with autistic people for like four years of my life and I also am very much um, focusing in disability in my master's degree and probably in my PhD. My master's and PhD is kind of Victorian literature adaptation and disability. So although I am a person who am not, I do not have autism, I know a lot of people who do and I have worked with a lot of people who do and have done a ton of research and a ton of writing on it. So I personally believe Michigan has autism. If you don't believe that, that is also fine, but that's how I'm going to be talking about this book. Most of my little like sticky note things are a lot about his autism too and like how he kind of deals with it and everything and I just I found this so wholesome and like beautiful because especially because of Dostoevsky being like I wanted to read create this character who is like completely good in such a cruel world and I found it so wholesome the fact that this character does very much have a mental disability whether it's autism or not and he just like accidentally created this entire book about how people with autism are like these incredibly good people in horrible unjust societies and I loved watching this happen because yes there are scenes where characters call him an idiot and talk a lot about how he's stupid and stuff but there are also a lot of characters who develop throughout this book and go no he's not an idiot he is actually incredibly smart and incredibly well spoken and it's kind of beautiful watching these kind of horrible characters like grow and also just how Mishkin affects their life. I thought it was just beautiful and I thought it was just so- I, I loved it so much and it's- I always find it- I always say this- I find it so much harder to talk about books I really loved than books I really hated because it's just like I just connected so much to this and I just thought it was just so beautiful and it's hard to explain why. Um, I guess I could talk a little bit about like different moments that I really liked in this book or like moments that I felt really showed Mishkin as a character because Mishkin is probably one of my new all-time favorite literary characters ever. Like my favorite literary character is Hanchen from Three Souls but Mishkin is probably a very very close second. Um, so basically Mishkin was originally going to Switzerland because he had epilepsy. I don't really know if I believe he has epilepsy or not. I personally think it probably fits from oversensitivity and being overwhelmed because his fits like don't really make sense in the sense of epilepsy and I feel like they were constantly just diagnosing people with epilepsy back then and um so that was the first part that I was like I feel like it's probably autism and then he also has these things that he's just really really obsessed with and talks a lot about. My boyfriend actually gave me a little bit of context in this because one of the things he talks a lot about that is a lot of the different orange things that I just was like it makes you think so hard about life is basically he's very obsessed with this idea of like if someone is on death row and is about to be killed like at the guillotine or firing squad or whatever and they are pardoned right beforehand and he knows a lot of different stories of people who that has happened to and apparently Nico told me that Dostoevsky was that happened to him and um, I found that so fascinating to read about because it's not something I have ever thought about and Mishkin talks about it a lot and I thought it was fascinating and fantastic and I also just loved Mishkin because um, 
he is obviously around a lot of people who are very high up in the hierarchy so very like fancy formal like don't really have any sense of real reality or anything and they're constantly doing things and talking about stories and stuff that's just ridiculous and he calls them out and it's so funny like people will be telling stories and like they'll be like oh Michigan what do you think and he's always like I feel like you're exaggerating <laughs> like I don't think that happened I think you're lying or exaggerating and I think it's so funny because again it's just such an interesting concept because I feel like a lot of books are written about just like rich upper class people you know fantasy worlds are always about the princess or whatever and like other books are just like always about rich people and you never have that character who just says what everyone else is thinking and just is like I think you're lying I don't think this happened so Mishkin just in these settings was fantastic um there also is a bit of a love story between Mishkin and a girl I'm not gonna say which girl because there's a couple of different girls throughout this book but I thought that was really really fascinating and heartwarming to watch kind of develop and happen and all of the drama and angst and stuff that was coming from that and yeah I just I don't even know how to talk about this book anymore I just love it so much I just loved Mishkin so much I loved all of the different characters even if they were horrible I loved watching them grow and yeah I thought this was just so so fantastic and yeah I don't know I don't know what else to say about this book I love it a lot I thought it was great. I gave it a five star. You will probably be seeing this on my favorite books of the year list. I just think it's fantastic. I highly, highly recommend it and I will definitely be reading more Dostoevsky after this because this was so good. So good. I have the brothers Karamazov on my bookshelf. I will be probably getting the rest of his books too. See, this is fantastic. I can't believe I found a new like favorite author, I guess, probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. New favorite book hopefully a new favorite author because I did love his writing um who would have guessed like I never thought I'd be a Dostoevsky person <laughs> but anyways I hope you guys all enjoyed these reviews for Lolita the stranger and the idiot and definitely tell me down in the comments below if you've read these what did you like about them what did you not like about them all of that kind of stuff but anyways I love you all and I'll see y'all soon bye